Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to solve integrals using trigonometric substitution. So there are three formulas that you need to know. So when you see something like this, when you see that there is a square root of a square minus x square in your integral, you're going to let x equal to a times sine of theta. And don't worry, I'm going to show you plenty of examples. If you see the square root of a square plus x square, then use x equals a times the tangent of theta. And the last one is the square root of x square minus a square. In this case, you have to use x equals a times secant of theta. So let's say we're using the first form. Well, our assumption is that theta is between negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, and so on. But don't worry too much about this. These are the ones that you need to know. Our first example will be the integral of the square root of 9 minus x squared over x squared dx. So right away, we see that we have 9 minus x squared. And 9 minus x squared is the same as 3 to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 2. So which form do we have? Is it the first one, second one, or third one? Well, you guessed it. It is going to be the first one. And you can see that a is equal to 3. So our formula will be x equals a times sine. So x equals a, which is 3, times sine of theta. And we also need to find the derivative. So the derivative dx over d theta, what is the derivative of 3 of sine? Well, it's going to be 3 times cosine. And what we can do is multiply both sides with d theta. So let's do that. And we end up with dx equals 3 cosine d theta. So we have the integral of 9 minus x squared. And x is 3 sine. So 3 sine to the power of 2 over x squared. So the same thing. 3 sine to the power of 2. And don't forget the dx. This is very important. So dx is equal to 3 cosine d theta. So 3 cosine d theta. I'm going to put x equals 3 sine up here because this is something that we will reuse later on. Now, what is 3 sine to the power of 2? Well, it's going to be 9 times sine of theta to the power of 2. So 9 of sine theta to the power of 2. Now let's simplify the numerator as well. So we get 9 minus, and this will give us 9 sine of theta to the power of 2. And we need to factor out the 9. So we get the square root of 9 times 1 minus sine of theta to the power of 2. Now we can still keep simplifying this using our trigonometry identities that you might have learned in high school. So those ones are cosine of x, and this is to the power of 2, plus sine of x to the power of 2 is equal to 1. You also have tan of x to the power of 2 plus 1 is equal to secant of x to the power of 2. And the last one is cotangent of x squared plus 1 is equal to cosecant of x to the power of 2. Now let's take a look at this one. If you subtract sine x squared on both sides, let's do that, you will get cosine of x squared is equal to 1 minus sine of x squared. So we need to replace this part with cosine of x squared. And notice that we are using theta instead of x because we have been using theta all along. So here we have to use theta. And what is the square root of 9 times cosine to the power of 2? Well, that one is easy. That's going to be 3 times cosine. So let's replace the numerator with this one. Let's go ahead and multiply 3 cosine with 3 cosine over here. So we will get 9 cosine to the power of 2. And here the 9 and this 9 will cancel out. So what is this going to be? We know that tan is equal to sine over cosine. How about cotangent? Well, cotangent is 1 over tan. This is the same as 1 over sine over cosine, which is the same as cosine over sine. So here we have cosine to the power of 2 over sine to the power of 2, and this whole thing is equal to 
cotangent to the power of 2. So how can we solve the integral of cotangent to the power of 2? Let me show you an easy trick. So you can see here this diagram, we have secant of x and this arrow to secant of x and this arrow pointing backwards with the 2 and tan of x and the same thing over here. The difference here is we have cosecant of x points to negative cosecant of x and then we have this same arrow and then cotangent of x. So how can we use this diagram? Well, let me show you. So the derivative of tan of x is equal to what? We see this arrow, right? So we have secant of x, and then we have to the power of 2. And we go this way, right? And then we get blocked up by this arrow. So that's kind of the way that I do it. When I look at tan, then I see secant of x. So that's how I get this one. And similarly, how about d over dx of cotangent of x? Well, same thing. I look here, then I go over here, then I see cosecant. So negative cosecant actually. And then don't forget the 2 to the power of 2. How about the derivative of secant of x? Well, when you're going on this side, what I want you to do is actually to erase these two arrows. So the derivative of secant of x, you get secant of x, tan of x. Because here we see secant of x, then tan of x. Then the derivative of cosecant of x is equal to negative cosecant of x, so negative cosecant of x times cotangent of x. So this is a very neat trick, and don't worry, you will see why we need this in a second. Let's go ahead and erase everything except for this part. So let's erase everything. There's actually no direct way to solve the integral of cotangent to the power of 2, but there is an indirect way. So the indirect way is to convert the cotangent to the power of 2 to a cosecant. So if we look at our trigonometry identity and subtract both sides with 1, we have cotangent to the power of 2 is cosecant squared minus 1. And let's go ahead and split this integral apart. So we have the integral of cosecant to the power of 2 minus the integral of just 1 d theta. Now, 1 d theta, what is the antiderivative of this? Well, the antiderivative of this is just theta. Let's see. Since the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, then we know that the integral of cosecant squared is going to be negative cotangent. Let's see. It's like saying, well, you have the derivative of cosine and that gives you negative sine. This means that if you do the integral of sine, so this means the integral of sine is going to be negative cosine. So the same logic applies here. And we're almost done. So remember the x equals 3 times sine of theta. This is where it comes in. From this, we know that sine is x over 3. And if you take a look at our triangle, this corner here is theta, then we have the Sokatoa rule. So the sole rule says that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And our opposite will be the x, and the hypotenuse will be the 3. So our opposite will be x, and our hypotenuse will be 3. We just need to find this sign. The Pythagorean theorem says x squared plus b squared is equal to 3 squared. So this means b squared is 3 squared minus x squared, and 3 squared is 9. So b is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now, you might be wondering, why is there no plus minus sign in here? Well, that's because the length of the triangle is always positive. That's why we only want the plus, we don't want the minus, and it's just redundant to write it at all. And let's replace the b with 9 minus x squared. Using this triangle, we can find the cotangent. So cotangent is equal to 1 over tan. And from the Sokotoa, tan is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is x, the adjacent is the square root of 9 minus x squared. So this would be the square root of 9 minus x squared over x. And what is theta going to be? We know that sine is x over 3, so theta 
is arc sine of x over 3. And this right here is our antiderivative, the integral of 1 over x squared times the square root of x squared plus 4 dx. We see that there is the x squared plus 4. So let's go ahead and use trigonometry substitution. It's not the first form, but it is the second form. We can see that a squared is 4, so a will be 2. And we only want the positive integer. So x equals a times tangent, and a is 2, so we have 2 times tan. And we also need to find the derivative. So dx over d theta is equal to 2 times secant squared. Then we multiply both sides with d theta. We will have the integral of 1 over x squared. So x is 2 tan, and x squared would be 4 tan to the power of 2. So 4 tan to the power of 2 times the square root of x squared again. So x squared is 4 tan to the power of 2 plus 4 times dx. So times 2 secant squared d theta. I'm going to put x equals 2 times tan up here. Now let's solve the denominator. Let's simplify it first. We have 4 tan squared times the square root. 4 tan squared plus 4. Let's factor out before. So we have 4 times tan squared plus 1. And we know that tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. So let's go ahead and replace it. So what is the square root of 4 times secant squared? It's going to be 2 times secant. So this will be our new denominator. So the 2 here will cancel out with this 2. We have secant and secant squared. So they will also cancel out. We can move the 4 outside of the integral, so we have 1 over 4, the integral of 1 over tan to the power of 2. So 1 over tan to the power of 2, and this is basically the same as cosine squared over sine squared. Then we multiply by secant, and secant is basically 1 over cosine d theta. And as you can see, we have a cosine squared and a cosine, so they have to cancel out. We can also get rid of this because this is basically times 1. And we have to do u substitution. So let u equal to sine of theta. So du over d theta is going to be cosine. So du is cosine theta, d theta, and d theta is 1 over cosine du. This is equal to 1 over 4 times the integral of cosine over sine squared, and sine is u, so we have u squared times d theta, and d theta is 1 over cosine du. And the cosines will cancel out. So we have 1 over 4 times the integral of 1 over u squared, and let's go ahead and write it as u to the power of negative 2. So u to the power of negative 2, then we have du. This is equal to 1 over 4 times the antiderivative of u to the power of negative 2. And that's going to be u to the power of negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. So we have negative 1 over 4 times 1 over u plus c. So u is basically sine. So we have negative 1 over 4 times sine plus c. This is where our equation comes in. So x equals 2 times tan. So tan is x over 2. We have a right triangle. And here is our opposite side. Then using Sokatoa, tan is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is x. The adjacent side is 2. And we want to find the hypotenuse. So c squared is equal to x squared plus 2 squared. So c is the square root of x squared plus 4. What is sine going to be? Well, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, and opposite is x. Hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 4. Our integral will be equal to negative 1 over 4 times 1 over sine plus c. So 1 over sine would be the square root of x squared plus 4 over x. Using this, we have negative 1 over 4 times the square root of x squared plus 4 over x plus c. 
And let's write this as negative the square root of x squared plus 4 over 4x plus c. And this is our answer. And before we work on the next problem, I want to talk a little bit about these three integrals. Now you might think that this one doesn't apply because there's no square root in this. But that's not the case because this is the same as 1 over x squared minus 1 to the power of 1.5, which is 3 over 2. And this is also 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1 to the power of 3. And because of this, we can apply the trigonometric substitution forms. On the test, you might see that there is a coefficient in front of the x squared, but this is no problem because let's say we have, let's choose this form. So we have the square root of a in parentheses to the power of 2 minus x in parentheses to the power of 2. It is the same thing. Now, if you look at this, we have the square root of the square root of 3 to the power of 2 minus the square root of 7 times x to the power of 2. For this square root, according to the formula, we have x equals a times sine. For this one, instead of writing x, we have the square root of 7 times x. And this is equal to a times sine. So a is the square root of 3 times sine. Uh, let's talk about the last one as well. You have the x squared and then you have 2x. But don't worry, this is very easy because we know that x squared minus 2x and let's say plus 1 minus 1. So plus 1 minus 1 which is the same as plus 0. So we didn't change anything. And then we have x minus 1 to the power of 2 minus 1 to the power of 2. And since this is in a square root, so we have the square root, then we can substitute with u is equal to x minus 1. So we have the square root of u squared minus 1. And then we can use this form. But instead of x being the variable, we have u being the variable. So we have u squared minus a squared. And instead of x, we use u, where u is equal to a times secant. So feel free to try these problems on your own, and then you can check your answers with my solutions. And I will put my solutions in the links down in the description below. And that's all for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to share with your classmates and subscribe if you haven't already. In the next video, I will show you how to integrate using partial fractions.